The microbiometer is a new task for measuring microbes in soil, compost, and compost tea. Why would you want to measure microbes? Well, microbes are the secret to healthy soil and healthy plants. Gardeners talk about these microbes all the time, but up till now, there's been no way to actually measure them. That's changed with this test kit. So how can you use the kit? Well, it's a great way to check if things that you're doing in the garden are actually working. You've fertilized your garden. You've added compost. Maybe you've gone out and bought some probiotics. These are microbes for the soil. How do you know that any of those things are actually improving your soil? Well, the best way to check is to actually measure the microbe. If you're seeing an increase in micropopulation, you're going to end up with better soil. A lot of the things we do in gardens, we just do because someone tells us we should. And I think it's time that more gardeners actually measure the success of what they're doing. So what does this cat do? Well, it measures the amount, the mass of microbes. It's a simple test that the gardener can do at home. It's relatively inexpensive. It's about $10 a test. It is a little bit more expensive than that when you buy the initial kit, but then you can buy refills for it, and then it's actually less than $10 a test. If you're interested in trying this kit, I have a discount coupon for 15%, and the code for that is in the description below. The kit also gives you the FB ratio. That's the ratio of fungus to bacteria. And some gardeners are interested in that. The kit is made by Prolific Earth Sciences, and I'm going to do a review of it in this video. I'm going to show you how to use the kit, and I've used it a number of times now, and I've come up with some shortcuts to improve the method that comes with the kit. And I'm going to review those tricks that I've learned. I'm going to compare the results of the kit to lab tests. And then I'll introduce some tests that I've done to check the accuracy and repeatability of this kit. The test kit comes in a nice carrying case and it includes everything you would need except some water and a soil sample. First thing to do is to go to the garden and get yourself a soil sample. And how you collect that is important. So if you're not familiar with collecting soil samples and taking them from several spots and averaging them, have a look at some other videos that will show you how to do that. I've gone in the garden and collected my soil sample and I've put it in one of these little bags. The first step is to sieve some of this soil. So it naturally comes with roots and bits of bark and all kinds of stuff. We don't want that in the test. We want a fairly small particle of soil for doing the test. So we have to sieve this. And the test comes with some sieves. There's actually two of them. And the instruction videos show you that you put soil in one side, put the lid on, hold them together, and then shake this. And the sieves make sure that only small particles of soil come through. The problem is these sieves don't work very well. They don't actually fit together. So you can't hold them with one hand. What I found was when I tried to sieve these, the bigger material would come sliding out between the two sieves. So I didn't find that working at all. It was suggested that you could put soil on this side, turn this one over and do it like this and kind of press it through. Tried that, that didn't work very well either. I did find a way to use these sieves that work quite well. Step one, put some soil in the sieve. Don't fill it up too full. Halfway works well. Take the sieve and put it inside a plastic bag and press it up against the plastic. The plastic tends to seal this top off. Now tap it with the other hand. That's enough motion to cause a small part of the soil to come through. And after a minute or two, you've got enough of a soil sample. As you'll see, you don't need a lot of soil sieved here. The other problem with these sieves is that this works great if your soil is fairly small and it's relatively dry. If your soil is wet, not much comes through from the bottom. Then what you really have to do is take your finger and just press it through the sieve. You also have a problem if this is really heavy clay soil. It just doesn't come through the sieve and you have to press it through. And I found your finger works fairly well. When you're done, you'll have a nice sieved soil in your bag. And I've got quite a bit here, more than you really need. 
The next thing I would do is get your test tube ready for the soil sample. The kit comes with nice tubes and even a place to put them. Now we want to prepare some liquid that's going to be used to extract the microbes from the soil. And to do that, you take one of these pre-measured little packs, tear the top off and empty it into the test tube. Then take this other tube, which is pre-measured for 10 milliliters, and just pour it in the tube. It comes with a handy mixing stick. Works just like an electric toothbrush, and you're going to use this to do the mixing. Mix it for about 10-15 seconds, just long enough to dissolve the salts that you put in here. Now it's time to get our soil sample ready, and we use a syringe for that. So the idea is to pull the plunger back to about one milliliter, fill the front, and then compress it down to half a milliliter. We want a half a millimeter compressed soil. Now what I found is that one milliliter isn't quite enough, so Pull it back farther than is recommended, and now fill this with soil. The easiest way to do that is simply put it in the bag and push some of the soil into it. So at this point we have a fair amount of soil in here, but it's loose. And so we really don't know how much soil we have. In order that we use the same amount of soil for every test, take your finger, put it on the tip, and press the plunger down. When you feel that you've compacted this soil, have a look at how much you have. And in this case, I have a little more than the half milliliter mark. So I will gently push the excess out till I get to the half milliliter mark, then knock the excess off, and that's my soil sample. It's important to do this part of the test the same way with every soil sample. Otherwise, you're going to introduce errors in your results. Take this, push all of that soil into the test tube, and now mix it again for 30 seconds. You don't even have to hold the stirrer. It does it all on its own. Once it's mixed, just leave it alone. Come back in five minutes. So what is happening in this tube? Clay soils tend to stay suspended in the liquid for hours. By adding this salt mixture, it actually forces the clay particles to settle to the bottom quicker. We don't want to measure the clay in there. It's also claimed that the salts will release the microbes from the soil. Some of these microbes are free floating, but others are tightly attached to soil particles. And so the salt releases the microbes and puts them into solution. Now, whenever you take a soil sample, you also have some organic matter, and that's lighter than water, so it tends to float to the top. But after five minutes, what you should do is take this tube and give it a couple taps. That will tend to knock the organic matter to the bottom. Now, to be honest, I don't think that works very well because I still see floating organic matter on there. But it's part of the test, so you might as well do it. Now we wait another 15 minutes so that all those soil particles can settle out and the microbes stay in solution. While you're waiting for things to settle, you can get your little test card ready. And this is really the heart of the test kit. These are special cards that will be used to actually measure the microbes. You'll see a ring around the outside, which is a grayscale. That will help us calibrate things with the camera. The spot in the middle is where we're going to put our sample. After the 15 minute wait, take one of the pipettes and take out some sample. Now what you want to do is get the pipette halfway down the liquid. You don't want to collect the floating stuff at the top and you don't want to suck anything from the bottom. You want that middle area. What I tend to do is to squeeze some air out before I insert this. If you insert it first and then squeeze it, the air bubbles tend to mix up the floating organic matter. Push it in about this far, release it. You don't need very much. Now if you see any material clinging to the outside, Wipe it off, and then we want three drops. You don't want to rush this process. Put on one drop, 
and then wait a few seconds. Let that drop soak into the material on the card. Then put on your second drop. And finally your third drop. Now you let the card sit for two minutes before you take your readings. When you're ready to take a reading, place the test card on the larger card that's provided in the kit. Then take your cell phone and start the micrometer app. Press the button called Start the Test. The top will give you different options for different kinds of samples. Since we're doing a soil sample, we'll just select Soil, and then the picture of the grayscale in the bottom right-hand corner. The program will now let you enter a sample ID, and when you've done that, press Accept. It automatically goes into picture mode, and it's ready to take a picture of your test card. Start with the camera higher up, and slowly lower it down until the blue square on the screen matches the square of your test card. When the software finds a match, it will automatically take the picture for you and then show you the results. In this case, it's showing quite a large number, 1753 micrograms carbon per gram. The number here is much larger than normal. And the reason for this is that I've used this test card several times and so the spot in the center is getting darker and darker. And each time it will give me a higher value. You can expect values between 2 and 800. I've shown you how to use the test to measure soil samples, but the exact same procedure is used for measuring compost. Now if you make compost tea and you want to measure that, you follow almost the same procedure. But instead of using the water, you use your compost tea. And of course, you wouldn't add a soil sample to that mixture. The phone app also has different type of tests. And so you can select between compost tea, compost, and soil. And those will give you slightly different numbers depending on what you're looking for. So the soil and compost is usually reported as a mass per gram, whereas the compost tea is reported as a mass per milliliter. Other than that, the tests are the same. Now, there are a number of different lab tests, but I'm going to describe them as if there's one test because they are all fairly similar. I've described the various lab tests in a blog post on my website, gardenmess.com. If you're interested in the details, have a look at that. Here's a table that compares the micrometer test to the lab test. As far as price goes, there's a huge difference. Each test in this test kit is about $10. If you send that same sample to a lab, you're going to pay several hundred dollars. The micrometer is done at home and takes about 30 minutes start to finish, plus the time it takes you to go in the garden and get the soil sample. If you get a test done at a lab, you're going to have to send it away, and it will take two to three to even four weeks before you'll get those results back. Now, the interesting thing about testing microbes is that there is no good test to measure them directly, at least not as far as getting the mass of them. The commercial lab tests are all indirect measurements. So they will do something to those microbes and then measure some chemical parameter that indirectly measures how many microbes you had. And that's a problem. Since you're not doing a direct measurement, these kinds of tests are not always reliable and they don't always work in all types of soil. Now the micrometer test is also an indirect measure. It's not counting or measuring the weight of microbes. It's actually measuring the amount of coloration you have in that sample. Since microbes are colored, the more microbes you have, the more colored the solution and the higher the value. And that's one of the reasons why that little card has that grayscale around it. The app on the camera uses that grayscale to standardize your phone of the spot in the center of that grayscale. But it is an indirect measurement and it does have problems itself. It's great for comparing two soil samples that have the same coloration, but it's not really good to compare two soil samples that come from completely different areas and are different types of soil. Now, if you send your sample to a commercial lab, they can get an FB ratio, but that's an extra task and extra cost. With the micrometer kit, that's included and it's automatically calculated each time you take a measurement. So that's a bonus. So what about the accuracy of these two tests? How good is the home kit? I mean, it costs you $10, so how can it be as good as a lab test? Well, there's a problem here. 
even when we compare expensive lab tests one to the other, we don't necessarily get the same results. The type of soil impacts the number that the tests generate. The same is true for the micrometer test. And we don't actually know how well it compares to lab tests because the manufacturer of this test still hasn't done those comparisons. That may not be that important. These tests work best when we compare similar types of soil. So if I have two beds in my garden, one of those I've left alone and the other I've modified somehow, I can then compare those two and the numbers will mean something to me. But if I want to take a soil sample from here and compare it with someone across the country with completely different soil, comparing those two numbers really doesn't mean much. And that's true both for the micrometer test and to the lab tests. Now I've gone ahead and done a whole series of different tests to test both repeatability and accuracy. And I've put those together in a separate video and you can get to that right here. I'm also in the process of testing compost tea. I wanted to see how the micro population changes as I make the tea. Does that process really increase the number of microbes? Well, this test should be able to show that. And when that video is ready, I'm going to put a link to it in the top left hand corner. Happy gardening.